Welcome to the Edupedia world. In this tutorial, we will study about cloning in Java. So let's begin. First of all, we will see what is copying objects. In other language, common in C++ to enable client to easily make copies of an object, you can supply a copy constructor. For example, we are having over here where we are creating an object of point. P1 is an object we have created using new point and pass the parameters for point. Then we are creating another object of point which is P2 and we are creating this object using our first object by passing our first object. So in this way you, we are using a copy constructor to make the copy of this object. Okay. Similarly, you can see over here, this is a copy constructor which will be written. So this is something that we can also do in uh, Java where, you know, we can create a new object by copying from the other object. It is called copy constructor and it is widely famous in C++. So over here, you can see in the copy constructor, we are having public point and then we are passing the point object as a parameter and from that point object we are actually initializing all the data members to our object okay java has some copy constructor but uh, also has different ways so now this was a way by using a copy constructor let's look at some of the different ways okay so, uh, in a previous tutorial where we were studying about the object class, we have seen that object class do have a method called as clone. Okay, so the object method clone is actually used to create the copy of object. This is how the definition of object method is protected object clone and it shows clone node supported exception. And uh, we can override also this method and we can use it as it is and what do you mean by doing a clone so well it creates and return the copy of this object the general intent is x dot clone is actually not equals to x but x dot clone dot equals x is true that means the equals method will always give us true when we talk about equals method, so that means the data member of the x and the clone of x will have same value. And when we try to do dot get class, uh, when we try to call dot get class on x dot clone and on x, it is also equal. Okay. Though none of the above are absolute requirements. The object class clone method makes a shallow copy of object. Now what is shallow copy? We will see that shortly. But by convention, the object returned by this method should be independent of this object. So that means the new object that has been formed by using a clone method should actually be independent of uh, the original object. That means it doesn't matter if you are making changes in the new object, then your uh, original object should not get impacted. So it should be independent. Okay. Uh, well, when we say it this method is having protected access that means we are using a protected keyword with the method of clone and that itself says that is it is visible only to the class itself its subclass and other classes in the same package okay in other words for most of the classes you are not allowed to call clone if you want to enable cloning you must override clone method okay you should make it public so clients can call it fine you can also change the return type to your class type you know instead of returning object uh, let's make it generic by you know returning your specific class type which for which you are creating the clone and you can also note through the exception so if you are you know changing a return type then it's not necessary that it will throw an exception because in that case you will be implementing clonable in your own class. Okay. Then the last point says you must also make your class implement clonable interface to signify that it is allowed to be cloned. Okay. So whichever class is actually overriding or using the clone method should implement the clone interface. Why so? Because that will actually tell you that uh, the clone method can be, you know, overrided and 
if you don't do that then your class will throw clone not supported exception so uh, just to ensure that you are not creating or, or getting that error just always implement clonable so the clonable interface is like this public interface clonable clonable is the name of the interface so marker interfaces are those interfaces which are empty that do not contain any method signature so the empty interface is called as marker interface Okay, why would there be uh, ever an interface with no methods? Well, there could be as I have told you about the marker interface. So marker interface purpose is just to, you know, tell the compiler that this class uh, can implement the clone method. Like in this case, we are implementing the clonable interface. So it will tell that this class you know, just marking it and telling that this class would be able to uh, implement clone uh, method. So just allow it. Okay. So this is just for the purpose of kind of marking, you can say. And another example is set interface, which is a sub interface for correction. Tagging interface, one that does not contain any method, but is meant to mark a class as having certain quality or ability. Generally, a what in Java language, uh, we can say misuse of interface, but actually it is not a misuse of interface. It is having a special purpose that is to mark a class for certain quality. Now, largely unnecessary thanks to annotation, but we will still interact with few tagging interface like this one. Okay, let's implement clone for point class. So earlier we have seen that for point class we use copy constructor. Now Let's try to create a object uh, using another object through clone. So this is one of a flawed clone method. You can see we are having a public class point and then we have implemented clonable and inside that class we are trying to override the clone method by passing point. But then what we are doing is we are doing point copy that is we are creating another object and doing new point and that in the constructor actually we are passing this dot x and this dot y and then returning copy okay so what's wrong with the above method well the flaw is uh, you know uh, when we say public class let's see this one okay so over here you can see we are having public class point 3d which extends point and it is having private int z Okay, and then uh, the above point 3D class clone method produce a point. Fine. Uh, this is undesirable and unexpected behavior. Uh, why? So because you see point 3D actually extends point. Okay. So now if it's extend point, then uh, all the methods of point class could be accessible point point 3D. So that means point 3D could also access clone method. If this is accessing the clone method, that means it can also produce a point object, which is obviously undesirable because we want to keep it just for point. The only way to ensure that clone will have exactly the same type as the original object is to call clone method from the object class with super dot clone. Okay. Because we want uh, whichever object is actually calling it, the method should return that object only. You no, know, it should not. We should not hard code it to return point over here. Rather, we should make it flexible to return the object that you know, uh, whichever object is calling it, it will returns its own. So that's why instead of you know uh, writing our own definition, just call super dot clone from within a clone method. So this is a proper implementation over here. You can see what we are doing is uh, we are creating a new copy of point. Okay. But then uh, how we are creating by calling it super dot clone. So if we do super dot clone, then it will return as a copy of point. But now the super dot clone will actually return the copy of whichever object is calling it. Okay. So point 3D is calling it the copy return will be of point 3D okay and it will go into copy uh, and we also need to implement clone node supported exception although this will never happen as we are implementing clonable over here okay 
Now to call object clone method, you must use try catch. That is because if you want to use super dark clone, then you should use try catch or you must rather. If you must implement cloneable, the exception will not be thrown. Okay, now let's see another uh, implementation of clone. Well, again, it's a flawed implementation. Let's look at it. So over here, you can see we are implementing cloneable interface. After that, we are having a clone method which is returning bank account. So we are doing public bank account clone. Fine. In that, although we are using super.clone, okay, so you see we are doing super.clone uh, and it is returning us a copy of whichever object we'll be calling it in the variable or object copy. And it is also uh, using try catch with clone not supported exception. Well, what do you think could be wrong over here? Well, it's look fine to me as per the previous clone implementation but uh, it is flawed so just try to guess why it is flawed um, I would say look at the data members of this class okay so you can see that it is taking a string name and another variable it is taking is list uh, of a string type transaction and in our previous case we were having simple primitive types that were in x and y so I see that is the only difference. So do you think that is something that is making it flawed? Let's see. Okay, so uh, I'm just skipping it for now and let's see what's being flawed over here. So this is a proper clone method. You can see over here what we are doing is we are actually implementing clonable and keeping the signature of clone method as it is. But uh, when we are calling super.clone, after doing super.clone in the copy, we are actually, uh, you know, uh, assigning the transaction to a new array list and then passing the transaction to it. So the transaction object that we are doing, we are passing it like that. Okay, why so? Why do you think we are doing that? Want super.clone will be taking care of this automatically? Do we really need to do this? Well, yes, we really need to do this. And why so? We just see that uh, by going back to... Uh, we see, just see that by going back to our previous slide. So let's just complete this slide. It says copying the list of transaction to another modifiable reference field produces a deep copy that is independent of the original. Fine. So this is independent of the original and it is doing a deep copy. What do you mean by deep copy? You know, previously we had used the term shallow copy and now we are using deep copy. So what is shallow copy and what is deep copy? Let's see that. Okay. So first, first we let's see what is shallow copy. Well, in shallow copy, duplicates an object without duplicating any other object which it refers to. Okay. So that means, let's say in our, um, this class, bank account class, or let's say uh, in our point class. Okay, in our point class, we were having two primitive variables that were x and y, both were of type int, right? So how did we create a copy just by calling super.clone? So that was a shallow copy. Shallow copy means we are duplicating without duplicating any other object which it refers to. So you see over here, actually point class never actually contained any other object within it. So we never need to actually, you know, create a duplicate any other object which it refers to. But when we talk about the bank account class, so you see bank account class actually contained another object, which is a list. So list is actually a part of collection. We will see that um, in our upcoming tutorial. But over here, consider just as another object that this bank account is having. Or let's say it, it could contain simply another object of another class. Let's say I'm having another class as saving account and a current account. Okay, these are two classes. Now, I can also have object of saving account and current account in my bank account class. I can even have public. Uh, then saving account and uh, the name is like save account and then... Uh, public current account and the name is our account okay so similarly i can have another class object in my bank account class okay 
Now if I do have then in that case I need to actually do a deep copy. So in shallow copy we actually duplicate object without duplicating any other object which it refers to. So when we talked about the bank account first implementation that was a fraud. So over here we were doing a shallow copy. So in shallow copy we actually copied all the primitive types. So when you do super dot clone it actually copies all your primitive types. So okay. But uh, you know the object type since string is also create a object although we are not doing a new string it's a literal that we are taking but then we are also having list. So it is not actually copying your list over here using super dot clone because this is an object okay. In super dot clone simply do not copy the object that is within uh, the object that you are cloning okay. So just imagine that there is an object and then you are uh, having another object inside it and you are trying to clone that. So it is not able to clone that object. Okay. It is only able to clone the primitive types. So that is what shallow copy is. So in shallow copy we do not duplicate the object that is contained within the object. Let's see this example. We are having int x 42 then we are having double y. Then we are having a scanner object and then we are having the list object. Okay. So when we talk about in text and double y, they easily get cloned, okay, and they will contain the same value. But when we talk about scanner object and array list object in shallow copy, we actually are not duplicating them, okay. When we talk about a deep copy, so in deep copy duplicates an object entire reference graph, copies itself and deep copies any other object which it refers to. So in deep copy, we actually copy uh, or deep copy everything. Let's say it is having an object is containing 10 object or many references. So it will copy each and everything of that object. So over here, it is actually creating copy of scanner and array list also. So you see over here, uh, although index and double y are copied, but scanner object and array list object are sharing it. So in case of shallow copy, uh, the reference that is scanner and array list object are uh, you know shared in a way like if you uh, try to change the cloned scanner in object then the original scanner in object will also get changed because both of these are shared but if you change the value of x in the cloned object it won't change the value in original object because we have already created a copy but over here we are sharing it Whereas in a deep copy, everything is independent. If I change anything in scanner.in, that is the in object of scanner, it won't affect the in object of the original object. Okay. So object clone method makes a shallow copy by default. Why so? Because you know the um, object class that is having the actual implementation of clone doesn't know uh, or the references that you are giving it only knows that there are primitive types and it can it has written a definition how to copy the primitive types but it haven't written any definition to copy the references type because the original object class actually doesn't know which uh, reference or which object you want to copy so that is something you have to do it yourself so this is a deep copy implementation of uh, bank account where we are doing super dot clone but after that we are also you know manually copying um, uh, by creating a new array list and passing transaction to it okay and it is returning as a final copy so this is called as a deep copy so there is an effective java tip and it says that override clone judiciously cloning had many gotchas and wards uh, one is like protected versus public so you should know where to use public clone where to use protected clone because that depends how you want to use it and you want uh, to make it accessible everywhere or not then it's loss in presence of inheritance okay so in case of inheritance you have to make sure that whether you want to use a deep copy or whether you want to use a, a shallow copy and if you are using inheritance in it then you should not manually copy it rather you should use super dot clone okay third point it requires to use an ugly tagging interface well yeah you need to implement clonable you cannot do much about that okay then it throws and checked exception well yeah it will because you know you are actually using a object clone method so it will throw 
so not supported if you are not implementing it really well okay easy to get wrong by making shallow copy instead of deep copy so that is you should be keeping an open eye where to use deep copy and where to use shallow copy fine guys so thank you for attending this tutorial